dollars after 41 years. Facebook is 800% for the last nine years since listing. This is May 18, 2012. Of course, you could have gotten a better return if you bought below the IPO price. From $42, it even went 50% down, which actually translates to a 1,600% return if you bought from the lows. Amazon, you could see a 200,000% increase for the last 24 years. And this tells you that your $1,000 is $2 million. Microsoft, from 1986 till 2021, this is a 450,000% return, a primary beneficiary of computer era and um, the cloud computing era. Google, 350% return over the last seven years. This is the laggard amongst the fam gas with only 350% return from 2014. Tesla, you can see it's 14,000% return. At its peak, it was 18,000% return from 2010 to 2021. Bulk of their gains happened in 2019, starting 2019 until recently. But um, it's been listed since 2010, 11 years. So it took about the first nine years of losses to finally push Tesla to electric vehicles and for people to acknowledge and pay for it as a commercially viable industry. Visa, 1,800%. That means your $1 million is $18 million. So $1,000 is $18,000. MasterCard is 9,000% for the last 15 years. You've been using credit cards. So Visa and MasterCard cashless systems were displaced over the last 10, 15 years. And these two entities monopolized, duopolized that industry. You could see that the primary motivation of showing you charts from the past is for you to understand that if you have the category leaders of an entire secular trend, it is how you make your 10x returns. And as you can clearly see, a 10x is a thousand percent. This made 90x. Your $1,000 is $90,000 in MasterCard since IPO. PayPal, 2015 to 2021. This is a spin-off from eBay. It was given for free if you were even uh, an early eBay investor. Nonetheless, if you were getting PayPal from the spin-off, it is still a 600% return and continuous for continuing further. Square and PayPal are both going up. 2015 to 2021, as you could see, it's a tight race for the cashless wallets of the of the Americans. Cash App and Venmo have invaded America, and this has displaced many traditional banking systems. So 1,800% return or an 18x in the last six years from Square. You could see that the 2020 pandemic, which allowed it to go 200% return from its IPO, was a definitive entry point. And any rallies and any dips of Square has always been a buying signal. Starbucks, from the likes of 1992 to 2021, you're seeing a 29-year um, franchise going global. So just to say to you what happened in the world, Starbucks is a 40,000% return or a 400x move. McDonald's is a 1,200x McDonald's happened in 1970 to 2021. They started the fast food revolution and they actually expanded this all throughout the world. You can see a McDonald's in all countries. So McDonald's was the blueprint. Starbucks was the copycat. Um, this is a 1,200x move. Domino's Pizza did the same thing, fast food franchise, and took over the entire delivery war. Domino's Pizza for the last 17 years made a 70x return in your money. Chipotle, this is a 3,500% return. There were mishaps in the past. You could see that marrying companies entailed those drops during the time that there was those incidents with E. coli, if you remember. But they actually fixed all that problem and we are seeing a takeover delivery war as well with Chipotle e-commerce sales and delivery doing very well in their recent earnings report. You could see this was a 15-year journey or a 40x move. Johnson & Johnson, your alcohol, your bad aids, Listerine. I mean, uh, most of your household goods came from Johnson & Johnson. 
1970 to 2021, 51 years of domination, a 400x move. Nike, 1980 to 2021, this is a 41 veteran, an all-star move, 2,500x. Your $1,000 is $2.5 million in the hands of Nike since 1980. Coca-Cola, this is a 900x move. Your $1,000 is $900,000, closing in at 100,000% or 1,000x because Coca-Cola for the last 60 years has dominated every beverage category in the world, not just soft drinks. We're talking about global domination of the beverage category from juices, water, tea, alcohol, coffee, beverage is Coca-Cola. JP Morgan, translate does that to a company that's dominated the banking space, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, 1983 till 2021. There's a 60x move. Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's publicly listed entity, it's a 140,000% return, or that is your $1,000 is $1.4 million. ISRG, Intuitive Surgical, it pioneered all the things about robotic surgery, the Da Vinci system for all uh, surgical conditions for hospitals. For the last 21 years, that is a 16,000% return or 160x. Dexcom, it domineered diabetes, everything that has to do with patient monitoring, insulin, everything that has to do with diabetes, Dexcom is the number one. 16 years of domination, that's a 35x move. Shopify dominated and democratized e-commerce for the average Joe and Jane. Six years of domination and 60x move. Walmart dominated 50 years, everything in terms of discount stores and also e-commerce sales today. This is a 350,000%. The Walton family beat out Berkshire Hathaway for the last 50 years. 350,000% return means that $1,000 in Walmart is $3.5 million. Triple War, uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Costco, 60x, 1986 to 2021. It's uh, 35 years old. Costco is the same age as me. This is a 60x move. Target, 16,000% return, 1983 to 2021, 38 years of domination. And uh, similar to Walmart, discount stores to e-commerce, all the categories of shopping. C-Limited, now dominating the Amazon of Southeast Asia, as well as gaming, the Tencent of Southeast Asia, you can even consider. The last four years, five years, 16x move. And um, knowing the blueprint, it's a uh, 1,000, 2,000%, 5,000% in the next 10 years. Pintuatuo, Chinese domination, the agri-tech, in the last three years, 300%, an attractive entry point. You could see that the sales are hitting $3 billion for a quarter. And um, the trade of 12 months for the last uh, year was about 11 to 12 billion with a 266% return in quarterly growth. So it's still strong for the next five to 10 years. It's just actually still beginning. Alibaba dominated the last seven years since listing. Notice that it's a 20-year-old company since 19, more than 20 years already, still dominating in most everything in their category, e-commerce, payments, cloud, and most of their venture, capitalist, uh, venture capital system. Still just up 100%, which tells you that the domination is not seen in the price versus their actual fundamentals. Alibaba's fundamentals, $100 billion in a year in terms of sales. Growth is still 50% for the last, well, you could only see in this uh, data last seven years, but it's been dominating for the last 20 plus years. Uh, amongst the revenues, you could see from $1,000 million, which is a billion dollars to $100 billion as it invades all categories from e-commerce, fintech, and uh, computing. JD, 
logistics, even healthcare, e-commerce. Last seven years, 250% return. A bulk of that started 2018. So there was a reset here. For those JD shareholders, take note that Google also invested at $40. So current levels of about $80 is just double the Google's investment, which started since 2015. This JD sales, you could see that for the last nine years, it is more than 10x from 7,000, or that means $7 billion to $114 billion, comparable to an Alibaba sales. Meli, could see Meli's numbers, Mercado Libre. This is a company that's hit 60x returns or 70x returns, had a drop. Now it's trading at about 50x returns. That means 50x your money for dominating Southeast Asia, Lat uh, sorry, not Southeast Asia, Latin America, Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, also known as um, the Amazon of the, the Latin American region. So they also own um, fintech with their uh, PagSeguro. Uh, sorry. Sorry. It's um, Mercado Libre has their own payment facility. Yeah. Baidu, a 15x move. Now dominating self-driving vehicles, but you could see that they've got a definitive um, business model when it comes to all things related to digital advertising search engine, not just on desktop, but also on mobile. Healthcare genetic editing, let's take a look at the sectors here. Digital health. Teladoc has dominated that scene for the likes of 2015 to 2021, 400% move, unstoppable domination. CRISPR, also dominating gene editing. For the last five years, it's a 7 800% return. Um, those who believe in gene editing have been an early investor and continue to see the next 10 years is bright for CRISPR. Intalia just had a breakthrough in their recent report. Phase one trials um, now hitting 600% return. Editas, 150% return. Recent trials show that... Um, Positive cure for blindness. Invite, they are ramping up genomic sequencing for everyone. Uh, the current cost from a million dollars the last uh, 20 years is now, well, 15 years ago, is now as low as $1,000 per genome sequence. They're looking to see the genome sequencing cost will be less than $10 in the next 10 years. So that would spell a bountiful secular trend for Invite. In their farming, food security, plant-based, cannabis, upcoming industries, 10x industries. App Harvest is less than 50%, just got listed a year ago through a SPAC. App Harvest got listed um, through a special purpose acquisition vehicle and is now supplying Walmarts and the Amazons for tomatoes and lettuce. Road Generation has been acquiring a lot of hydroponics and has been catering, also known as the largest hydroponics firm in America. So it's the Home Depot for every plant, uh, whether you're planting cannabis or planting tomatoes or setting up your indoor farms. Road generation is a 10x move for a year, two years so far. Sundial, this is a cannabis up and coming, 2019 to 2021. You could see that the industry is still um, very new. This company has gone down 90%, and uh, we are assuming that the industry is going to do well, and Sundial, with a billion dollars in cash, is ripe for acquiring the best cannabis companies instead of setting it up. So they're like a bank for the cannabis industry. Beyond Meat, still too early in the phase, 100% up since IPO. You're seeing that Beyond Meat is now the partner of Starbucks, Dunkin' Brands, Yum China, Yum Brands. A lot of companies, Alibaba. So as we are gearing for the next domination of plant meat in the food of a food palette of each uh, global consumer, Beyond Meat is ready to take that. And let's see where it goes. 100% so far for the last two years. Renewable energy, charging stations, batteries, biodegradable plastics. It's a world where we see domination in these trends. Let's take a look at these companies so far. ChargePoint just recently listed 
through a SPAC as well. This was a SBE going into the market as ChargePoint. Biden's 500,000 charging stations is up and coming for the next five to 10 years. We're seeing a 150% growth for the last year. We see a 1,000% move for the next 10 years. End phase, as micro inverters are necessary for all solar homes, you could see end phase dominating over the last three years, 2,005% return. That's a 25x move. $1,000 is $25,000 in end phase. Solar Edge, the number one, beats um, end phase in terms of uh, end phase. End phase is number two. Solar Edge is number one in America when it comes to micro inverters. This tells you that this 1,200% return is also going to go higher as they both are in the same industry. Solar micro inverters, number one and number two, solar edge and end phase. Next era, the number one solar energy installer in America. Next era energy has been listed since 1983, trading at 14,000% return over the last 40 years. Sun Power, it's been listed since 2005. But only in 2017, 2018 was the inflection point happening for a lot of appreciation for solar. We're seeing this huge move. It's actually in the ground floor. Entering sun power is similar to just investing in it, 2008 areas. And with uh, an industry bright for their future, we see uh, sun power getting a 500% or 1,000% return in the next 10 years. Sun run. Sunrun has been the same thing with uh, Next Era and Sun Power. So far, 300, 400% return, a pullback from the 800% return. Sunrun is partnered with Tesla for all the bright boxes and power walls installed in America. I didn't write for solar, also a strong company. Danimer Scientific, we're very early in the biodegradable plastics. We have yet to actually convert many plastics into biodegradable but we see the next 10 years bright for this industry. While it's down 20%, see that, um, let's see the future. Is it gonna go 500% return in the next 10 years? Origin materials, still very new. As you could see, biodegradable plastics is such a new uh, industry. It's still down 20, 30% from its pack entries. So origin materials is partnered with the likes of um, Dan One and Unilever, Nestle, to actually Transfer your plastic bottles to biodegradable. Pure cycle, same industry, up 50% versus the other two. But we can see that the industry is beneficial for the entire sector. Self-driving vehicles, LIDARs, voice assistance, batteries, additive manufacturing. We are in the phase of a huge turn for the next 10 years. So the things that you saw with the fam gas is perhaps going to be replaced from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles. And that bodes well for your LiDAR sensors, robotics, voice assistance industries, batteries, and AM. One uh, company that entered the market through a battery, through a SPAC is QuantumScape, still down 38%. Actually, uh, the thing about this is that they use the entry point when it changed name. Of course, QuantumScape had a SPAC. It was um, KCAC. So if you're going to base it when it changed name, it's still down 40% when it changed name. Because when it changed name, it was already trading at $30. And right now, it's trading at $23. So um, of course, all SPACs started at $10. So it's still 100% return from that initial 10 so you'll see that some of these uh, valuations or their starting points could be tricky because um, they came from a SPAC. Alster is a special purpose acquisition company. You can see the current levels are still unchanged, but at some point in time, yes, they were 60% return. Um, and it was even cheaper then. So it went also below uh, 10 at some point in time. Innovis, 40% down. Actually, Innovis is still at $10. So you could see that these um, charts, I took this from macro indicator. Either way, what you'll see is that these new industries are very new. 
Uh, that's why the market is not yet appreciative. SPACs in general in the LiDAR scene need about 10 years, 5 years for the market to appreciate. FUV, RC Moto, also in the electric vehicle space, now entering the battery recycling phase as well. FUV is up 200%. The truth is this was um, $1 to $30. So the percentage returns can actually be not as accurate if you're not looking at the lows, as this will assume from the IPO levels. NEO, so you'd assume it's just 600% because this was 10, it went as low as $1 here. This is actually 60x, depending on where you entered. But assuming you entered NEO at 10, it's nearing $60, $50, or a 60x move. XPeng, up 100% from your IPO, started listing at about $18 last year. You're seeing the start of Chinese electric vehicles, just like what you saw with the smartphone era with Apple. Proterra, we're just starting to electrify many buses, also known as the Tesla of buses. Proterra is 30% down because this came from a SPAC, ACTC. Serens is up 600% as all the cars have to talk to you. And the voice assistance network is powered, number one, by just one company, Serens. For the last three years, 700% return. Cybersecurity, cloud computing, AI, SaaS, edge computing, let's discuss these trends. Just by looking at the charts, you can see DocuSign is domineering that entire electronic signature market as well as notaries. So DocuSign up more than 600% for the last three years. Zoom video also nearing 500% return for the last three years, occupying the remote work collaboration domination. Snowflake dominating the cloud warehouse space with data and analytics. Snowflake up 20% as the IPO was quite expensive to begin with. Fastly, 100% return since IPO. Take note, it did surge to as high as 400% return in the past. Cloudflare already trading 500% return. Um, so that's a vast discrepancy with Fastly. As you could see, Cloudflare has been eating market shares away from the rest, the number one edge compute so far, and also domineering some cybersecurity. CrowdStrike, known for the best in so crowds, uh, for cybersecurity, 300% return since IPO. Zscaler, 600% return for the last three years since IPO. Twilio, up more than 1,000%, 1,200% cloud-based communications leader for the last five years. Palantir, starting to get known as the artificial intelligence leader, 150% return since IPO, listed last year, self-direct um, listing. Streaming, digital advertising, gaming, social media, let's take a look at the charts. Twitter, 1,800% return for the last five years. I could be... I have to check this. I think this is a wrong. Sorry, sorry. I don't think this is Twitter. Sorry. Twitter didn't dominate that that way. Uh, neglect that. Could have made a mistake there. I might have um might have made the mistake when I was taking the data. Yeah, forget that. Twitter is I think about if I'm going to be um checking that again. So macro charts would help Twitter history since IPO. It, it, it hit the market at $26. Right now, Twitter is roughly about $70. There was no, um, there was no stock splits here. So it's about 3x. Pinterest started $20. $27, $18 IPO, there was drops, so it's about 200%, yeah, it's doing $60 today. The trade desk is a 25x move for the last five years. Disney is trading at 140,000% return, 1,400x. You could see that the 50-year it, because it's very difficult to find a company that can win for 50 years straight, 
This is the reason why those returns are possible. Disney, 1,400x. The fact that Disney and Coca-Cola, Apple were winners for more than 20 years is an astounding feat. That's how you get those 1,000x moves. Netflix dominating for the last two decades um, on its way to be a 100,000% return. It's now 45,000%. That means it's a 450x. Your $1,000 is $450,000. Um, close to hitting a million dollars for your um, IPO price if you entered. Roku, five years ago, it was trading at... Uh, Less than $20. It's now trading at uh, $400. So it's an 18x move or 20x your money so far in the last five years. Let's take a look at eVTOLs, drones, some space satellites. eHang is a 100% return since listing 2019. It had a surge of as much as 800%, um, had a correction, and it's uh, way above 100% since IPO. ASCS, Space Mobile. So we're seeing internet from space like Starlink did. 19, uh, 2019 to 2021, we're seeing just a start, 20% return so far since its listing. ESTS listed through a SPAC called NTA. Space is also a listing. This is a SPAC, Special Purpose Acquisition. This was IPOA by Chamath. So it's up 200% return since listing. <clears throat> GSAT is still way below its IPO, so they've only now started to begin a partnership with Qualcomm for broadband um, connection in space. So 2014 to 2021, it's still actually down about 50% from its IPO. Esports, gaming, live streaming, wearables, let's take a look at them. Copen is just 200% return for the last 30 years, which we think is cheap given the next uh, domination of wearables, especially your Google Glasses. Their patents are all there already. Eman is still 90% down since 20 years ago, just like Copen, as people are now appreciative of wearables only after 20 years, with government contracts now working with Imagine. Boozy, for the last 10 years, nobody was looking at it, except nowadays all hospitals are in recognition for the Vuzi blades. So it's now up 100% so far. Um, that recognition has been a 10-year hard work, only recognized last year and still continuing further. Unity just got listed. We're talking about the world of metaverse. So Unity has, um, so some of the new companies that went IPO just looks one year old as a publicly listed company but this is since 2005, I think, 2003. Uh, I have to recheck my history. But this is a very old company already, Unity Software. So all of your mobile games um, is dominated by just Unity Engine and Epic Games through their Unreal Engine. So it's up 40% so far for the last year, and we think it's going to dominate for the next 10 years. So just showing to you all the number one in the category for the sector. Roblox up 20% for the metaverse. We'll see how it goes. So children are now learning how to develop their games by playing Roblox as well. Esports is very new. Gamble wants to be the number one in US. Esports through Gamble is Esports Entertainment Group. They're adding esports stadiums. It's still very new, just 200% up from IPO last year, 2020. Doyu, still very new. For the last three years, it's been listed. So you could see that this is by far down 60% because of the non-merger with Huya. However, you could see their sales has been growing quite fast for the last three years. Um, if you take a look, this is actually 10x move for the last uh, three times four, 12 quarters. Huya, same thing as people gain more traction in watching games online, live streaming. So Huya and Douyu are the one and two market share could see that the stock is just down 0% for uh, Huya, just unchanged. Agora, live streaming Behemoth, uh, handling your, handling all live stream communication, not just for Clubhouse, not just for Unity games, but with all dating apps as well right now. So you can actually check all mobile games that have to do with um, talking, live stream, real time. 
Agora is a part of all of that. Still unappreciated by the market. Actually, since IPO, I think this is down 20%. Some reopening stocks. Let's take a look at the, some, some of them. DraftKings is actually betting on sports and eventually also esports. DraftKings is up 400%, got listed through special purpose acquisitions, SPACs. Penn National Gaming acquired Barstool Sports. They want to enter into the esports and the sports as well. So sports betting market. They're trying to beat DraftKings so far um, because the traditional casino is now wanting to be part of the online world. National uh, Penn National Gaming got a 40,000% return or a 400x move. So um, some people might wonder why would Penn National Gaming be priced this much? Apparently, Goldman Sachs thinks it, believe, it still believes that um, Penn National Gaming is, is in a transition mode. Um, so it's all about checking the market cap of Penn National Gaming for the last 10 years. Airbnb, although it's a $100 billion valuation, people are still seeing that the future is sharing economy and the platform to that traveler is gonna, or business traveling or leisure is going to be Airbnb. Still down uh, since their listing in the market. Let's take a look at Ashford. Some hotels are now trading at distress levels. For the last 18 years, Ashford trades at 91% below, below its IPO. So it might make sense to take a look at a company that has 100 hotels in their plate without debt anymore. Um, my purpose was fast because I wanted you to see what's happening in the last 10 years, 20 years. Um, last 10 slides, let's go. Let's take a look at semiconductors. There's no Silicon Valley without semiconductors, right? All about the GPUs. NVIDIA, 55,000%. That's 550x your money. AMD, 800% return. Silinx, 16,000% return. Qualcomm, 35,000% return. Skyworks, 3,000% return. Corvo, 150%. Lattice Semiconductor, 2,500%. Applied Materials, 70,000%. ASML, 35,000%. Sorry, I didn't put Intel. Um, it's also a domineering uh, company, but it was already outstripped by NVIDIA and AMD. So this will be fast. This what if is just to ask you, when you're looking at the charts, are you looking at it from a 10-year perspective or are you looking at it on a daily perspective? The next time you take a look at your positions, ask yourself, well, what if I invested in Apple since IPO? So that if you are investing in current companies, are you willing to see the moves? So it's going to be fast. People need to have their dinner. So that's it. Thank you. That's it. Good night. Bye-bye.